So I'm Danny Gregory, and I want to talk to you about the price of art supplies and how we spend, well, a surprising amount on them. But there's a particular reason that I want to talk about that. I don't want to scold you for buying art supplies. That's not the point. But I do want to tell you about an essay that I wrote last Friday. I write an essay every Friday, and you can see it. And you can subscribe for free if you'd like at dannysessays.com, or you could sign up. There's going to be a little thing right there that allows you to sign up. So I write these essays about, you know, creative matters, things that, that occur to me about the creative process. And this week, I was thinking about buying art supplies. So here's the essay that I sent out last Friday. Um, maybe you saw it already, maybe you read it already, but let me read it to you again in that case. <clears throat> so I would be writing it to you. So hi, you, your name goes here. Uh, last week, I went into my local art supply store, and I came out with a bag full of Posca markers. And they were on sale, but I dropped probably close to 40 bucks on them. And I've never used these particular pens before. They're paint markers, and they seem to work like acrylic or gouache because they're opaque. And I know a certain amount about using opaque materials, but I don't really know how people use these pens or what I'm going to do with them either. And I buy a lot of art supplies like this on impulse. Maybe you do too. Ideas swirl in my head when I see them on the shelf, ooh, and I scrape them into my basket. But when I get home, the desire to make art has been sated by my buying spree. So they sit in a bag or on a shelf or in a box or a drawer until I get around to using them. Hopefully they're not dried up by then. The problem is that I'm overlooking a rule of economics, and that is that many things have two prices. First, there's the price you pay at the store, the $40. Let's say I buy a fresh chicken at the supermarket, and it costs me $8.16 in cash. But before I can eat that chicken, I have to pay the second price, I have to cook it. So that may take me an hour, and so I have to pay a price in time as well. If I had an hourly rate, I could figure out what that cost was in cash too. So if I went to a restaurant, that second price would already be factored into the first price. When I got the check, I'd be paying for the chicken plus the chef's time. So if I rent a movie, I'll spend two hours watching it, two hours that I'll never get back. If I buy a book, I'll have to pay a second price by investing time in reading it. And if I don't read the book, well, I might as well have burnt that $20. So back to my markers. If I want to turn those markers into art and into a fun and fulfilling experience, for me, I'm going to have to pay the second price. I'm going to have to spend some time to learn to use them, maybe by watching them videos or asking some friends how they use them. And then I'm going to have to practice using them until I really understand the lessons. I'm going to have to experiment, and I'll probably make a lot of crappy art in the process. So that price could expand to include other materials like paper and, of course, like time. So here's the thought. What if we try to spend not so much money on the first. It's, it's what if we try not spending so much to pay the first price and change our way of living to focus on paying the second price? Put away your credit cards and play those dusty board games that are sitting in the garage or wear those unworn brand new shoes or break open all those art supplies that are drying up there on the shelf. Let's pay the second price and make some art. That was the email that I sent out on Friday. A lot of people wrote back to me and they said, I never looked at it that way. You're absolutely right. I have all these art supplies that are just kind of gathering dust and wearing out. And then I go to use them and I really don't know what I'm doing with them or I forgot why I bought them in the first place. People wrote to me and said, you know what? I saw some artists using them. I got all excited. I, I went out and bought them. And then I forgot that I bought them, and then I forgot who the artist was who used them, and I don't even know what I'm doing with them anymore. So 
The idea is really be more productive, make more stuff, do things. Don't worry if it's going to be crappy. That's never the problem. They're going to be crappy because you don't know how to use the stuff yet. But it's better to use them, better to pay that second price in order to get to the point where you're getting your money's worth out of them. You're actually making great stuff that you love because you know how. So, and that doesn't necessarily have to even mean taking lessons, watching videos. It just means doing it, experimenting, seeing it, figuring it out, and then saying, oh, okay, now I know what I'm doing with these things. So I know that that's been true of me and these Posca pens. In fact, I took a workshop last weekend. I learned a lot about them, but I'm going to continue fiddling around with them to try to get them to a place where I want to. And that's going to be true of my gouache. That's going to be true of the big box of markers down there. That's going to be true of the collage materials I have, all the other stuff that's been sitting around. I'm going to really focus on making stuff rather than buying stuff. Are you with me? <laughs> That'll be fun. In the meantime, if you want to get some stuff for free, sign up for my newsletter or my essays. My essays are a newsletter. I'm not sure why I even use the word newsletter. Um, but sign up for my essays and I'll send you some more thought-provoking ideas next Friday. Okay, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again then. Bye-bye.